Today's goal after a successful install of the Watchmon Plus is to install and configure the Shuntmon and Shunt Trip. Cells are balanced to within 0.02 volts and looking great as any Batrium user feels when they see a nicely balanced battery pack. Doing anything with the battery cables or BMS requires that you turn off the Watchmon Plus before any changes are made. Doing this in the wrong order may create magic smoke that a warranty claim can't put back in. Removing old cables and test fitting placement for the shutdown, decided up here would look nice and neat and fit well once the TV was refitted to the wall. There are two mounting holes, one to the left is under the PCB so you need to remove it to access the second hole. Refitting the shunt on PCB, be very careful not to over tighten the screws. I run the shunt data cable with the balance leads and will hide nicely underneath the heavier DC cables once completed. I use the sharpie to mark the cable length with everything screwed into place to get the cable length as close as possible. Then use the lug to mark where to strip the cable insulation. After cutting the cables, I dry fit the cables again before double crimping each lug and covering with heat shrink. Making the power sense cable for the shuntmon, I use the same process as with the balance loom. Two amp glass fuses, soldered into place covered with heat shrink. I really wished I used black, not red here, but it was a positive cable so it made sense at the time. Just doesn't look as neat I think. Always check the continuity before reinstalling just in case that little fuse isn't okay. Then install from the most positive terminal to the shuntmon, running the cables nice and neat behind the large DC cables. A few zip ties and this part's done. I made the mistake of installing the balance leads before retesting with the testmon, so let's do this the right way and see that part. Much better. Remember, negative first, then positive, or low, then high. Plugging all the power back in one step at a time, I check the voltages and polarity just to be sure. A little cable management here and there to make it all look sexy, and then add the power and signal cables to the shunt. After powering the Watchmon Plus, it takes a good five minutes on my network for the Watchmon Toolkit to wirelessly connect and start receiving data. Wiring up the trip unit is quick and easy. All you have to do is run a cable from OA over to one of the terminals on the trip and then run a second cable from the trip back to the positive power. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to configure the shunt. That's these three figures on the top right hand corner of the screen here and that will tell us how much is coming and going from the battery and the capacity of the battery. So we go menu, hardware, shunt, click edit, and then we change the type to shuntmon2 500 amps. We also want to change the nominal capacity to 160 amp hours, which is approximately what my batteries are. We want to reverse the orientation because I installed it so it looked neater rather than the quack way around. Uh, and then we want to change, go into metrics and we want to change the state of charge to full. Click OK and click Save. 
Then we go menu back to chart again, top right hand corner, you can actually see that we're drawing zero, well we're not drawing very much energy at all from the batteries. Uh, the batteries are fully charged, I've got it set to 57.4 volts and there's not much solar at the moment anyway. The last thing I've got to do is configure the shunt trip to operate correctly and the parameters we'll be using for that is under control logic uh, and under critical. So we've got low cell volt, high cell volt is both turned on, 2.7 uh, and 4.2 that's well within the, the reaches of what I want to deal with. Temperature and stuff like that is all spot on. I want to do the transition stop. I want to change that to about 30 seconds just so it doesn't it doesn't stop working for a very like very small event. So we want it to be in that state for 30 seconds before it does anything. Uh, low shunt voltage, I might, ch well I'm gonna have to change that to 48 volt. High shunt voltage, maybe 58 volt. So that's the parameters that I'll use for now. So if I click on save, that is done. Now we've got to go and tell it to trip, so to speak, and on what event. So then you've got to go to hardware, go to expansion, and under expansion, we've got the Watchmon 5 already selected, but we've got to change the output function. Now I'll be using critical pulse on, or critical pulse off. I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter which one you use, but I'll be using critical pulse on to control my setup. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I will actually just do a manual on, so I don't have to change any other settings. Now, as soon as I trip this, as soon as I click save up here, the power is going to go out to the Watchmon. So to stop that from happening, I could one, wire it a little bit differently, or two, add, add USB power. So we'll just add USB power to it just for the sake of convenience. Now we have got manual on selected and we're going to hit save. Now as soon as we hit save, the trip will trip, so to speak. So I'm not sure if you can actually see my finger here, but I will uh, hit save. I'll hold it up and then three, two, one, click and it trips. So that works as we would expect it to work. Now if we click on edit again, we go to none and then we click save. We can reset that breaker. And now we want to put it into the final state. So we go edit once again, we go to critical pulse on. Is it critical pulse? Critical, yeah, I think it's critical pulse on. If it's incorrect, I'll leave a, a note below. We hit on save and of course it doesn't trip when it do, does that because we are not in an errored state at the moment. So there we go, we go back to the main chart, we can see it all working now. But there we go tubers, that is how you control a shunt trip within the Batrium software. In the next video we might do something a little bit more interesting and we have a Australian standard fire alarm. So the hope is that I can use this fire alarm to be activated or this fire alarm to activate the bait trim to hit the shunt trip once we go over, like once we have a critical fault, i.e. the button gets pushed or the smoke alarm gets triggered. So we've got the connectors underneath here. We've got uh, normally open, normally closed and neutral, I believe. So we're going to hook that in. That is actually a Clipsal unit and it's 240 volt hardwired, but it also has a battery in there as well. So that will be an interesting video next. Tubers, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.